the rise of Marco Inaros, the proto-molecule strikes back, and Earth tries to retaliate. This is my review for The Expanse Season 5. A. V. N. It's headphones, Neil! Headphones Neil here with my review finally for The Expanse Season 5. So I binge watched it over the past probably about a week or so, um, maybe even less than that, um, so I can catch up on what's going on in the universe of The Expanse. And overall, the season definitely builds upon what we've been seeing in the, the show overall. So this season focuses more on the changing tide of alliances between the factions. So we have Marco and Naros trying to rally the Belters to, or all the various factions of the Belters to his cause. Earth is kind of just living in and doing its own thing until the second half of the season. And basically up until the attack by Marco and Naros, um, everything is kind of as is because they, everyone assumes that the proto molecule is um, no longer a um, motivating factor for in the universe and the galaxy and all of that so overall the season starts off okay we have a lot of back and forth with um, Naomi trying to look for her son ultimately finding him and that whole um, story so overall that generally works but it ultimately leads to the one of the side conf side things being resolved as far as Alex um, dying because of all the uh, high G burns that he went through and having a stroke. But the original crew of the Rosinante coming together, less Alex and everyone understanding that they're family and they need to stick together. Um, ultimately, the crew is now going to be um, an independent crew, so no longer tied to any particular faction. Mostly from what I could tell, just because it all looks like they're all from, or because they're all from different factions and they're working as a crew and their family, so they're working to rise above any one particular faction. Um, the season's overarching theme and premise is that Marco Inaros is able to rally the factions of the belt together under his, um, flag and it's kind of join me or die or my way or the highway and we have the side story continuing less Naomi as well as far as their son um growing and we kind of get to learn a little bit more about him and him kind of not really accepting that he's living under the graces and um legend of his father so while he thinks he's um, all that and more. He's not quite there, but we do see s some growth on his part that he's able to do more than his father, but he needs to have that stability in order to um, become greater. And he, from there, it's kind of he's still a child in some ways, but he's grown up a lot in others. So kind of a more relatable version of Anakin and a more a, a better version of watch, in my opinion, in this case. Um, but once Marco launches the attack on Earth, especially with um, Christian, I was the Madam Secretary lady being the only one to know about the attack, we see a lot of um, changing in the political structure on Earth with the interim um, leader of the Earth faction basically being kicked out because they're only... Uh, they're basically falling into Marco and Naros' hands of wanting a war, whereas this Madam Secretary lady wants to show that they're that they can that Earth can be the um, better faction and go above his war, and that they want every, they truly want everyone to be equal. And Marco is just aiming for a war, and ultimately something there's something underlying his motivations, and somehow he was able to come up with a fleet and army, but no one knows how. So that's kind of where the crew of the Rosinanti is coming into play, that they are, um, they need to figure out why, how he's getting his funding and what he ultimately wants to do with the belt and why he's protecting the ring gate so badly. So that's kind of what leads us into the end of this season, that 
Um, he made a trade with Mar the Mars faction. Um, I, I always mess up the name, so I'll say OPA, but I won't. I also will admit that I might be wrong on that. But basically, he Marco traded the proto molecule for ships and an army. So that's kind of w w how he was able to consolidate his power and rise so quickly with the free navy. Um, so basically, the proto molecule, from what um, we learned from, and from I want to say. James Holden and the lady that he started to work with this season was that the proto molecule is alive. It's trying to find a way to get through, um, basically get through and expand and live and grow a lot more. Um, again, compared to when the ring gate builders shut it down, so it's trying to come back through the ring gate network. So. I think from what I could tell and not having read any of the novels is that's what season six is going to be about is shutting down the gate or shutting down the belters and the Mars factions, basically anyone who's not Earth, so that the proto molecule does not come through the gate because um, anyone who's not in the free navy understands the potential for harm while the belters seem like they either understand it and want it to happen or don't understand it and are looking just at the technology to consolidate their power and grow a lot. So overall the season generally worked. Last se Compared to the season 4, which I had to review some of the synopsis because I kind of forgot what happened, um, it kind of felt if it was a good season overall compared to season four, I want to say season five was the better season. I liked some a lot of the base, space battles that went on and a lot of the shifting stuff that went on, but it was also a continuation, so it kind of felt like two halves of the same season. Um, so if you are if you have not season if you have not seen season five yet, I would recommend watching season four just to kind of pick up on all the changes that went on. Um, what happened with Drummer's former boss, whose name I forget, and definitely pay attention to all the ship names. Um, don't you don't necessarily have to remember them. You just kind of have to um, make sure that you know them so that you kind of know like where Naomi is. We should, of course, know the Rocinante, but kind of also know some of the ships that are being used by the Free Navy and by Marco Inaros, by Drummer, and some of the various other factions. So, um, it's good. overall a good season. It went by pretty quickly. A lot of, except for the kind of some of the slow parts early on with um, Naomi and her son, um, that kind that all actually paid off by the end of the season. So, definitely worth a watch there. So that's all there is for this particular review. I basically, in short, I will say that I recommend the season. I give it about a grade of a B plus to an A minus. Um, it was good compared to the last season. It was a good progression, good continuation of the story. Um, at some point, I'll probably read the novels. Um, I haven't really looked to see how they've kind of strayed away from or stayed close to the novel, so I'm not sure on that part. But overall, the show is worth watching, and I can't wait to see what they do with the next season. So that's all there is for this particular review. So um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback of your own, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you become a patron of the show, then you get bonus content, um, scheduled for upcoming content, and all of that good stuff. So of course, for patrons, look out for the... A special bonus episode for season five of the expanse a little bit different than what i've done for the recent bonus content episodes that i've released but definitely one that i think you guys will want to hear so that's all there is for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time